AI can diagnose disease from your breath. It sounds like science fiction, but it's happening right now. Imagine your pillow becoming a diagnostic tool, analyzing your nighttime breathing to uncover hidden health issues. Welcome to a world where tireless AI doctors are revolutionizing healthcare, detecting the undetectable. The future of medicine is here. Greetings, my brilliant band of health hackers and medical mavericks. Welcome back to another mind-expanding episode of Emerging Science Digest. I'm your host, Theo, and I'm thrilled to be joined once again by our resident experts, Gwen, our AI whisperer, and Charlie, our medical mystery solver. Together, we're ready to be your guides through the labyrinth of cutting-edge medical discoveries. Today, my dear data doctors and algorithm aficionados, we're diving headfirst into the AI revolution that's transforming healthcare as we know it. We'll explore how artificial intelligence is becoming the ultimate medical detective, from analyzing your nighttime breath to diagnosing diseases that have stumped human doctors for years. So synapse up, my cherished cognitive explorers. Whether you're a tech enthusiast, a healthcare professional, or just someone who wants to peek into the crystal ball of medicine's future, this episode is your ticket to the front lines of the AI health revolution. Let's embark on this digital diagnosis adventure and see if we can decode the future of healthcare. Welcome back for our deep dive. We're going to be looking at AI in medicine today. Super interesting stuff. Really gets you thinking about the future. We've got a few articles from neurology today, one from NPJ Parkinson's disease, and then one from clinical infectious diseases. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there, for sure. I think what's so cool about this is we're going to see how AI is being used to, like, maybe even diagnose diseases before we even see symptoms. Yeah, like, it's almost like this medical detective or something. Totally. Like, one study we'll look at, it was from MIT. They were using AI and radio waves. And get this, they could detect Parkinson's disease just by analyzing someone's sleep. Wow. Crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's incredible. And think about what that means for, you know, a disease like Parkinson's where early detection is so important. If we can catch it early, who knows how much better the treatment could be, right? Yeah. I mean, that could really impact someone's life. Absolutely. And it's not just in these like, you know, high tech labs. You know what I mean? Right. One study actually found that just a simple 10 second ECG, like the kind you would just get at a normal checkup, that could potentially have clues to early stage Parkinson's. It's interesting. Yeah. And what I thought was interesting, Dr. Goldman, he was the lead researcher, he was actually surprised by how accurate the AI was at detecting these early signs. So it makes you wonder what other hidden patterns might be lurking in this data that we've already been collecting all this time. Oh, for sure. I mean, think about all that data. But it's important to remember, these findings, they need to be, you know, tested again. Got to make sure they hold up, yeah. you know. Yeah. It needs to be replicated at different studies, different people, that kind of thing, before we can really start using it to, like, actually diagnose someone. Right? Makes sense. It's really important to get that validation. Yeah. And get this. AI isn't just being used to diagnose. We're actually seeing it being used to come up with new treatments. Oh, wow. Yeah. For example, there was a Dr. Maris and his team, they used AI to analyze a ton of data, and they actually found that existing anti-inflammatory drugs, you know the ones, they could potentially be used to treat Parkinson's. Wow, that's, that's amazing. What I find so incredible about this yeah. is that AI can process so much information. I mean, think about it. It can go through huge amounts of data mm -hmm. and make these connections that would have taken us, like, forever like you take humans years decades even to find these things mm. but ai can just cut through all that yeah right? right so i mean it has the potential to really speed things up find treatments faster 
of course, you know, we still need to do more research, clinical trials, all that. It's it's not like a magic bullet, but it's really exciting to see. Totally. You know what else blew me away? Like all that data they get from sleep studies, all those electrodes and wires and stuff. Mm -hmm. Turns out AI can analyze all that way faster than a person can and probably even better, too. Yeah. Analyzing all those sleep studies takes forever. Right. Dr. Goldstein, I think he's a sleep expert. He actually said that manually going through it all is the slowest part of the whole process. Really? So using AI could really speed things up. And then doctors and nurses would have more time to actually, you know, spend with patients. That makes a lot of sense. But how does that even work? Like, how can AI make sense of all those brain waves and stuff? Well, basically, they train these AI models using tons of sleep study data that's already been analyzed by, you know, human experts. Okay. So the AI learns to recognize the patterns in the data. Hmm brainwaves, heart rate, breathing, all of that. And then it can connect those patterns to different sleep stages, sleep disorders, that sort of thing. So the AI is basically learning from the experts, but then it can process everything way faster. Exactly. What do you think about this whole idea of AI being like a partner in healthcare? I think it has a ton of potential. AI can do the hard work sifting through all that data, you know, and finding those tiny details that people might miss. But we still need human experts especially for interpreting what the AI finds and then figuring out the best treatment. It's like working together, AI and humans. So true. Welcome back to The Deep Dive. And, you know, this whole idea of AI being a partner made me think of another article we were going to talk about, about AI companions, like chatbots, and if they can help with loneliness. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Loneliness is a big problem these days. More and more people are talking about it and how it affects our health. Right. And it's not just people talking about it. It was a big part of the Surgeon General's report. Oh, right. And they were saying that loneliness can have serious effects on our physical and mental health. It's not just, you know, feeling a little down. It's actually a a real health issue. Absolutely. And, you know, the research shows that loneliness is linked to all sorts of problems like heart disease, dementia, and even a weaker immune system. It's really clear that having connections with people is vital for our well-being. And where do these AI companions fit into all of this? I mean, can they really help people feel less lonely? Or do you think they might actually make it worse? I mean, people might end up even more isolated, stuck in the digital world. That is the million dollar question. Some studies show that AI companions can be good, especially for people who are already isolated. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, they provide some interaction, something to think about, even a sense of having someone there. Mm -hmm. But we need to do a lot more research to really understand the long-term effects. Mm. Like, can these AI interactions really replace actual human connection? Right. It's kind of like we don't know for sure yet if these AI companions can really deal with something as complex as loneliness, you know? Yeah. But it brings up a bigger question, I think. Like as we use technology more and more in healthcare, how can we make sure we're not like forgetting about the human side of things? That's so important. Technology should be there to help us connect better, not to replace those connections altogether. Mm-hmm. We have to remember that good healthcare isn't just about the data or the diagnosis, right? Right. It's about empathy understanding, really building a relationship with a patient. Seeing the whole person. Exactly. So from your perspective as a neurologist, what can we do to better support patients who might be dealing with loneliness? Well, I think the first step is just recognizing that loneliness is a real health concern. Mm. We need to be open to talking about it with our patients. Just acknowledging it can make a huge difference, you know? Yeah. We can also encourage them to find social activities, maybe connect them with a support group, or even suggest therapy. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget about the simple things. Mm -hmm. A phone call with a friend, a visit from a loved one, those things really do matter. So even with all this technology, it's still those real world connections that are key. Finding that balance is important. Absolutely. We need to think carefully about how we bring technology into healthcare. It should help us, not make us lose sight of those essential human connections. I mean, this whole deep dive has shown us just how much potential AI has in medicine. It could completely change the way we diagnose diseases, find new treatments, all kinds of things. But it's not a simple answer, you know? It's complicated, and we have to be careful about how we use it. It's true. It feels like we're only just starting to understand what AI can do for medicine. So as we wrap things up here, is there one big takeaway you hope our listeners will remember from our conversation today? 
I think the biggest thing to remember is that AI is a powerful tool. But it is just that. A tool. The future of healthcare depends on us using this technology in a way that's responsible, ethical, and never loses sight of the fact that human connection and well-being have to come first. Ah, that's a great point to end on. Thank you so much for joining us for this deep dive into AI and medicine. And to our listeners, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. Well, my esteemed electronic health enthusiasts, we've reached the end of our AI medical odyssey. Feeling a bit like you've just stepped out of a sci-fi medical drama? Trust me, I'm right there with you. So, what's your take? Are you ready to let AI be your nighttime health guardian? Or are you clutching your traditional thermometer a little tighter? Perhaps you're somewhere in the middle, seeing both the promise and the perils of this brave new world of AI diagnostics. If this episode got your neurons firing, don't keep that mental electricity to yourself. Share it with that friend who still thinks AI is just about robots and movies, or that doctor you know who's been skeptical about tech and medicine. And hey, drop your thoughts in the comments. Are you team bring on the AI doctors or let's keep healthcare human? Your voice matters in this grand experiment we call the future of medicine. Remember, every medical breakthrough in history started with someone asking, what if? So keep questioning, keep exploring, and who knows? Maybe you'll be the one to crack the code on the next big health innovation. Until next time, stay curious, stay skeptical, and keep breathing easy. You never know who or what might be listening. This is Theo, signing off from the frontiers of AI-powered healthcare.